So hello and welcome back to episode 9 of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. It's myself, Barry Doyle, back with Andrew Blair White for a ninth week. And Andrew, I suppose the big talking point at the moment is, will we have Irish horses at Cheltenham? Yeah, hopefully so anyway. Um, I, it's still so far out from, from it. You really would hope that things have changed by then. I, I know um, people are getting a bit jumpy about their anti-post bets and stuff like that. You'd like to think an awful lot of bookmakers will go uh, on, on kind of justice refunds for, for Irish horses if they don't get over there. But uh, I, I must say, I do think they will. I, I think it's just, I think in nine weeks' time, an awful lot of things will be different and hopefully Irish horses will be able to take the, their part over at Cheltenham. Mm, interesting. Just just heard Leo Varadkar, not to get into politics now, but he was on the radio this morning and basically said, expect another two months of this before there's any ease and of restrictions. So I suppose a lot will depend on how things are across the water. But we have to plan for it anyway. And I have to be honest about it. I heard people saying, oh, be shrewd, pick the English horses, pick the value. I don't know. I think I'm just going to be brave and back Irish horses. If I fancy Irish horses, if the price is right, I'm just going to treat it like it's... It's, that's that's my policy anyway, especially for the show. Um, let's treat it like it's on. Let's treat it like they'll be there. There's a lot of money at stake, and and, and hopefully, um, hopefully all will be well. But I suppose first topic on the show, Andrew, we do it every week, is your performance of the week. We'll start with you. Yeah, I was actually very impressed with the juvenile hurdle at Chepstow. I saw this race take a few... Uh, bashes on Twitter and and some social media people not rating it too much. I thought it was really smart from the winner Adagio. I think he's a really progressive horse. Obviously, I put up Nassalam on this show back on week one, and I wasn't actually overly disappointed with his run. Uh, he, he probably is up against it now in a triumph hurdle, to be fair, but there's an awful lot of talk that these Irish juveniles are far, far ahead. And I'm not sure they're far, far ahead. I do think Zana here is a very good horse. I'd have to see it with French Asile again. That juvenile hurdle he won was one of the worst races I've ever seen take place at Leopardstown in behind. There's a few absolute... Il Mig, Dark Voyager, uh, the horse of McManus horse as well. I can't remember the name offhand. Yeah, no... I'd have to agree with you. I think that Adagio now, I suppose when we were on the podcast last week, we were saying, has a nice little mark there now that he tried to preserve, preserve it for something like the Boodles, but uh, took his chance and two good horses, as he said, came well clear. Listen, I suppose my, my, my performance of the weekend came in a handicap at Wing Canton. One of these, I suppose, novices that was, was rated 124 going into the race, sizable Sam. Now on, on, his, on his, his previous victory, um, the Jeremy Scott had said that on soft ground he was a little bit worried. So when I saw the money coming for him, I suppose I wasn't that keen on him at first because of the, the trainer's comments after his maiden victory. Back at the course, so he's run well at, at the pass and he had one last time out. But uh, this horse is fair raw now. He's, he's a bit of ability. Uh, he won, won this off 124. He was coming to the second last and he was side to side. The two ears, he was looking around out in front, doing everything so easily on ground, apparently, that he doesn't like. Now, if you're to look at him, you'd think that he would handle softer conditions. But I think this one is definitely one for the tracker. I put him up my 20 horses to follow for the year. I was very pleased to see him get the job done. But as I said, coming to the second last, you're thinking this, this lad's going to go away and win by five or six lengths didn't do that got headed uh by by one upmanship and you know you're thinking he's beat coming to the last but literally there must be some engine he just literally dug back in and um you know impressed to see him do it especially after being headed and absolutely plowed the last out of it as well so encouraging i think he is going to be a chaser i think he's gonna it's funny i've had a, a small wager on him uh, before we we ever started doing this show to win any race at cheltenham i was thinking maybe you know might be given a soft time uh, maybe win a maiden you know get a handicap mark maybe something like a martin pipe or something like that um Albert Bartlett, I think he looks like a horse that would that would definitely stay three miles, but I think they are gonna bypass Cheltenham and go to Aintree. I think that's that's the vibes, and I think there was there was mention of that after the race. So sizable Sam could we might not see him at the festival, but could be one maybe at three miles over hurdles and definitely a uh, chaser for next year. That's sizable Sam, uh, one for the tracker. But Andrew, just I suppose we, we must talk about a couple of the other races as well. The, the key races this weekend, McFabulous. Oh my God! Absolutely raging. Not going stairs hurdle, but he looks some tool, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he's a, he's a lovely horse. Um, Harry Cobden gave him a pretty safety first ride. I know Mick Fitzgerald uh, had a few thoughts about it, that he obviously went very wide, but there's some fair engine there because he made a few little jump and hiccups early in the race, which is unlike him. Uh, but I, I'd assume we won't see the best of this horse until he tackles a fence next year. I, I assume they'll have a crack at the Aintree hurdle. Uh, as, as connections will will want to win that potentially on on route to the novice chasing next year, and I see they've already earmarked the the Cotto Star on Stevens Day as as the most likely kind of short term project for fences next year. So he he could be a really exciting horse uh, over a fence. Shame we won't see him at Cheltenham, but he's in that in between trip, and I'm not sure three miles at Cheltenham would be quite up his street just at this time. Master, Master Tommy Tucker took the big one Imperial Aura where, where do you sit with him now? Yeah, geez, it was a little bit like watching Manila Indo in the in the Savills chase the last thing I thought Imperial Aura was going to do was fling David Bass out of the set, out of the saddle at the second mm. uh, looked just a very innocuous fall they were saying something about there might have been a bit of a shadow there I don't know, he just seemed to take off far too far out. Uh, you have to obviously put a line through that, but if they decide to go to the Ryanair off the back of that, it's hardly the ideal prep. So you wonder whether they'll they'll be contemplating maybe running him in the Ascot chase next month. Horses that run at that card have a poor record at Cheltenham usually, so that's something to bear in mind also. So I don't know where they go with him now, but geez, I'd say that the likes of Min it, it would be looking at that kind of licking his lips really because... He seems to still be getting underrated. He should have been shorter than Imperial Aura in the first place before the weekend. And he now, I think, finally is a little bit shorter. The winner is very smart, but God, you wouldn't trust him with your life, would you, Master Tommy Tucker? Manager Blair White, I found this earlier on, actually, because Wednesday the card is the move dollars at Nace. I remember being there with you last year in Boy Allen. Has your thoughts changed? I suppose the ground is, is probably similar enough to, to when we previewed it, la- previewed it last week. You were looking at, at Ashdale Bob. Um, still sticking with that? Yeah, I think so. The race hasn't really changed much apart from being on a couple of days later. I do remember being there, obviously, last year where you were uh, absolutely convinced that then while then was hopping up and down on the same spot <laughs> was your yeah. quote-unquote that day. Uh, but look, you'd like to hope something decent will win it and, and go on to represent Ireland pretty well in the Ballymore. But it, it's a good race, very informative, and, and obviously it's it's one of the nice big days of the year. So uh, hopefully it all goes well on Wednesday and, and we see a decent winner. Mm, absolutely. And Blue Lord was the one I was most interested in. I think she had a good attitude on debut. and. Yeah, lots of talk, obviously, about Bob Ollinger. Ashdale Bob has, 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 won, has won in great a company, but I think Blue Lord could be one, definitely, um, to keep on side, definitely, for this race. But, Andrew, let's go, let's go through our selections very, very quickly. We, we, we do this on every show. We'll, 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 have, a, we'll have a chat. I think Nassalam uh, probably disappointed you last weekend, but you have some crackers in there. Let's go through them. Yeah, exactly. Started off with Nasa Lamb. Still has a, has a bit of a chance. Wide receiver, 25s, any race. That looks a good bet. Shackham for Swan, 9-2. Uh, looks a good bet as well. Latest exhibition, 16-1. to one. Has probably one horse to beat. Delvino and Dussart, you can, you can throw out. Certainly Dussart, probably Delvino as well. Brave Man's Game at 16 for the Ballymore. Looks a very good bet. Run Wild Fred, 10-1, to one, any race. That hasn't changed. And my only wild card so far, Time Hill at five to one for the stairs. Still pretty happy with that. Going through mine, and we start every week on mine by talking about El Dorado, Alan. Unless he's going for the grand annual, I'm not so sure <laughs> that uh, that 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 selection is is going is going to stand the test of time. Mac Fabulous disappointing, twelve to one uh, for the stairs hurdle. He's going to entry. I I I, I can't see Paul Nichols. Um, being tempted enough to go for the stairs hurdle, appreciate it twelve to one for the Ballymore. Now this one, the more I think about this one, I suppose are we going to see him at the Dublin Racing Festival? It, it looks like they're going the two mile route, but I'm not totally giving up on it, Andrew. Twelve to one for the Ballymore. Willie Mullins has been known to change his mind uh, the two tw- forty eight hours before these uh, races at Cheltenham. So look, at it's still alive in my in my eyes. Probably unlikely champ now. I suppose, you know, is, is it ideal preparation? He's 12 to 1 I've taken for, for the Gold Cup. That was when we thought he was going to go for the Savills, like Henderson had said. And he's certainly a horse with a huge engine and, and potentially the, the sleeper in the Gold Cup market. But 
you know, we haven't seen him yet. So, like, it, it wouldn't worry me. I think he has had quite a bit of experience even for a novice last year. And Earl Jermaine can't well, wait to see this horse, as you know, on Wednesday. Um, the race is cut up to a four-runner race. Um, so there should be no excuses. Black Bow's in there um, in, the, in the good novice chase at Nace on Wednesday. Uh, and also Captain Guinness, which I know you liked him for the Arkell as well. But and Earl Jermaine, I'm, I'm very hopeful. I just wasn't quite confident that he can put up a bold display and put himself as potentially the leading Irish contender for an Arkle. Uh, he's 10 to 1 any race, so haven't covered for the marsh as well. Keskan risk. I think I heard uh, uh, Joseph O'Brien's comments um, on Racing TV just about his run and he expects this this horse is a classy horse so you know there could be some improvement to come from him at the Dublin Racing Festival 25 to 1 he's still the same price wouldn't totally discount it but that's uh, yeah Kescon Risk Concertista uh, for the Mayor's Hurdle mightily happy with this one I think she will go this route uh, something tells me this year Honeysuckle is the Mayor of the Scone Champion Hurdle I know you couldn't have it last year uh, but I think she's and she's on my radar as well I'm not going to put her up this week but uh, Honeysuckle certainly for the Champion Hurdle she could be the only one um, she could be the leading Irish hope for the Champion Hurdle and Tukas 25 to 1 for the Grand Annual that was a bit of a I suppose a punt last week <laughs> seemed to be a bit of support after we put it up so maybe some viewers had some some quid on um, it wasn't my money anyway <laughs> uh, 25 to 1 for the grand annual um, yeah look at I, 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 this horse is entered in the Dan Moore this weekend upcoming um, whether he goes there I'm not so sure I'd be thinking they could preserve his mark of 138 which I think is is very a very very good mark for him over fences very neat jumper um, as well if you look back at his races uh, wasn't over hard on Mark Walsh in any of his three runs this year and uh, yeah he's, he's certainly won better ground at the Cheltenham Festival for connections that can uh, go in Monkfish a wild card and she wears it well both wild cards are 6-1 to one and 3-1 to one. happy with both of them to be fair we want to see she wears it well run uh, probably before Cheltenham um, to, you know to, to, to you know to be, to be I suppose very confident going over there, but they're the two. I'm happy with the two of those as well. So this week's selection, Andrew Blair White. I've done enough talking. You tell us what it is. Yeah, look, it's hard. It's hard to find markets, you know, with much juice in them uh, at the moment. I must say, especially when you're not having maybe massive Grade One racing on on, on the weekends. Uh, so I've had a delve at one of the markets uh, that probably won't change too much before the race, but. I think he's overpriced, and it's in the Fox Hunters. Uh, called his case, uh, who won the race last year. Obviously, at sixty-six to one, nobody in I was there. Not a single punter in the entire stand I was in certainly seemed to have backed the horse. Uh, but look, his gentleman form's decent enough. He was travelling well in the race a couple of years ago when falling behind on the fringe at three out. He's one of these horses that runs fairly stink up until Cheltenham and comes alive at the track. Uh, this will have been the plan. Ran a nice little prep race the other day uh, when finishing fourth behind Bill Away. When he's been tuned up, he's 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 beaten Bill Away seven and a half lengths in a two and a half mile race down in Cork and beat him ten lengths in the Fox Hunters last year. So I can't understand how Bill Away's five to one and it came to pass is twelve to one. I think there's too much of a difference there. He's twelve to one with I think four different bookmakers. So uh, it's readily available for, for viewers if they want to get it. And just in terms of one of the markets we probably haven't covered at all, maybe mm. for right reasons, maybe for wrong reasons, but uh, I think he's got a fair chance. This is his target. This is his aim. You know he goes well at the track. I think he's got every chance. Mm. Interesting. Well, we went into handicaps last week and we're sticking with handicaps again this week, Andrew. I'm looking for those big price ones. Uh, yeah, we're going to go for the Boodles this week, Andrew. And uh, my selection is Autumn Evening at 40 to 1. Jessica Harrington, um, listen, he, he was a winner at Cork in a maiden. Sean O'Keefe rode him on the day. A three rod that was rated 78 on the flat. And he's a big strapping horse. The comments afterwards was he, he won a cork on on testing testing enough ground by Tamayus, um, a strong three year old that I think is going to improve as the season goes on. Um, Sean O'Keefe's comments after the race, you know, big strong, big strong three year old, and you know handles those conditions. But mentioned that he has a bit of class about him. Interesting, good run in the in my opinion, behind Xanafir in the, in the grade one at Leperstown there at Christmas. Finished six and a half lengths behind him. Um, Travelled very, very well turning in. And I thought he was an eye-catcher for me. Finished fifth in the end, just a half length behind St. Sam. 
and he's less than less than half the price of of autumn evening. I think this is the way they'll go with him. Listen, he doesn't have a handicap mark as of yet, but you think anything in the I suppose early one thirties um, would would see him in off a nice weight in the boogles. I think this probably is going to be the plan for him. And as I said, he made a mistake or two crucial times. He could be better than the bear farm at Leperstown at Christmas. 40 to 1. He's priced up at three firms, all different prices. So we are going with that 40 to 1 um, for the Boodles. That's autumn evening. And uh, maybe we can move a few more markets this week. Um, <laughs> hopefully, it won't stop them going to the Boodles. But no, listen, that's. Uh, I, 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 it's a bit of a punt again, Andrew, but it's just one I think that it could be eye in this race with. And I think he's a horse with a bit of class. That concludes, Andrew, uh, so was episode nine of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. We're getting the prices in there. And uh, look, fingers crossed, I suppose the cases start dropping and it's more likely that we're going to have a full Cheltenham Festival, obviously without people, but fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. Both countries are in are in national lockdowns at the moment. You'd like to hope, um, and there's an awful, awful lot of vaccinations going around as well. So you'd like to hope cases will start to drop and then we can really uh, get stuck in in the last couple of weeks. But uh, we, we've got to get the good prices in and hopefully back a few winners in the process. Just a shout out to Brian Walker from the West Midlands. Um, I said if his anti-post book was a footballer, it'd be James Milner. He wasn't too impressed. I think it's rock solid Brian Walker's uh, uh, selections down. Looks to be the solid auction. Uh, sorry, the solid options uh, right across the board for each of the races, and some nice prices in there as well. But I think he was claiming he'd like to be Jack Grealish rather than rather than. Uh, uh, will, will Grealish go to United? Will he? Uh, not a hope. Jeez. Villa are going to finish in Europe this year anyway, so he, he can stick around for a bit of European football. 